to give you my review of Dr. Pete Bertolero's book, Green Tree. Now, if the name does not sound familiar to you, then you must be living in a cave under a rock. Or you may know him better as Pipe Pastor. Or as I have affectionately started calling him Pop. So I got this book as a gift from Pop. Oh maybe a month ago now. No I don't know, right around there, three weeks maybe. Um, in the mail with a package of goodies. This is the book. Great uh, artwork. Sorry about the reflection. There we go. Sorry, it's the first time I'm using my laptop to do this. So the cross and the pine tree, the evergreen. Uh, so basically the book talks about Christmas the way it was intended, the way that the original message was supposed to be um, given, the way that scripture in the Bible talks about it, uh, and the way that we are supposed to be celebrating it in its non-commercialized um, glorified manner so it's not about Christmas it is not about cell phones and tablets and new cars and all that stuff as some people may know Christmas is about Christ and it goes it, it the book goes over all of this um, and even for somebody who's been a Christian for decades, um, you, you still kind of get persuaded or um, misdirected uh, towards things and you kind of almost begin to buy into some of the secularization and commercialization of what Christmas uh, is now trying to be sold as. And he uses this term sold as, as you know, it is, you look at any commercial from Thanksgiving up until a couple of days before Christmas, and it's, it has absolutely nothing to do about Jesus. It has absolutely nothing to do about the birth of Christ, the Savior of the world. It has absolutely nothing to do about the real meaning of Christmas. It all has to do about come into this store, come into that store, come into, you know, whatever retail outlet and spend your money and buy your gifts for whoever. Um, and it's always really bugged me. You know, I love getting gifts. Uh, I, I can't say that I hate gifts by any means. I, I love gifts. I love giving gifts. Giving gifts makes me feel good. Um, because I know that I'm going to bring, uh, hopefully bring a smile to the person's face who I'm giving the gift to. And uh, so, anyway, it's long intro here to say that I absolutely love the book. The book, even for a person who's been in Christianity or been in church for decades, you know, two, almost three decades, my dad was a pastor. He just retired. He's been a pastor for 43 years, something like that, uh, in a Pentecostal denomination. And, you know, we, we taught and he preached, you know, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, the birth, the Son of Man, or the Son of God, you know, who was the Son of Man who was going to take away uh, the sins of the world. So we, we taught that, we learned that. But then also, like as a side note or a side dish, 
yeah, you've got your steak, but hey, here's a really good helping of sweet potato casserole to wash that down with or to go with it, followed by a sip of sweet tea. And it was always kind of like the, okay, yeah, that's great. Yeah, we're celebrating Jesus, but now give me my presence. For me, anyway. Uh, and reading the book, it definitely changed the way that I look at Christmas. Uh, that I celebrated Christmas this year in a totally different way. I actually wanted nothing to do with the commercialization of Christmas. I didn't want to go, <clears throat> I really didn't want to go into any stores, especially the mega retailers. I didn't, I really didn't want to watch TV because of the commercials. I just, I wanted the focus to be solely on Jesus and his birth after learning the the deeper meaning of Christmas. And that's what this book is about. It's not about just the meaning of Christmas. It is a deeper meaning of Christmas and a deeper understanding of Christmas. Uh, one of the major things that really uh, got me uh, which may seem insignificant, but I always wondered why did we choose the 25th of December uh, as a date for Christmas? I thought, okay, well the 25th of December, well there's not really much going on in December, so it must have just been uh, kind of a revenue generating plot, uh, some, sort, some form of capitalism and commercialism where they said, hey, we need something that's going to sell a lot of stuff in December since a lot of people aren't buying anything. We need to keep the revenue coming. Because uh, the whole nativity scene where everybody is showing up and the lambs and the oxen and you know all that stuff that you would see and the camels. Garbage. Uh, for the most part. And the magi or the three wise men that brought their gifts to the Christ child. That stuff is so blown out of proportion and so misconstrued and misrepresented for what the truth actually was. And that goes over in the book of what was really going on. And my pastor actually touched on that again today. And he said the Magi, who were probably being trained by uh, Daniel, or, you know, years earlier, Daniel started that school uh, to teach people um, you know, the scriptures, the Jewish scriptures, and how to look for the Christ child as he came. So he said 490 years from this prophecy I got from God, the Christ child will come, or he'll be revealed. And so they were looking forward to it, the Magi were. And the Magi were all kinds of learned, educated people, probably from Daniel's school. And he touched on that today, and I thought, wow, that really ties into the book. I wonder, did he, did he read the book? Because so much of the stuff that my pastor covered was stuff that you had mentioned um, in the book, or that was mentioned in the book. So it was just really, really nice to see that he's on, <laughs> that he's on board, uh, or that you know he's on the right track uh, with with what was in the book. Uh, the thing that got me back to the twenty fifth. Um, he was saying that the 25th was the day that in his, so for him, my pastor, um, Pastor Tim Jennon of uh, Chapel Valley Church in Madison, Wisconsin. He would say the 25th uh, probably was when the Magi showed up to actually recognize him. But either way, 2 B.C., he said 2 B.C., you know, watch the video of the Star of Bethlehem. It goes over, you know, really great scientific proof or you know at least that kind of thing to get it narrowed down which again both on the same page there um, so yeah 25th is feasible uh, it's possible again as it said in the chapter that's not really the important part the important part is that he came uh, and thank God that he did so uh, oh by the way housekeeping Nothing. Uh, I'm in the house, so there is no pipe smoking in the house. Uh, uh, and I don't really feel like having anything to drink at the moment, uh, which will come later uh, tonight while I'm relaxing. Anywho, back to the story. So I thought the 25th was just this commercialized thing, because if you look at the calendar year, like every other month has a 
uh, celebration or some sort of holiday. January really doesn't have anything except for New Year's Day. <laughs> February, Valentine's Day. March, not really. April, there's something. May, Mother's Day. June, nothing. July, July 4th, and Father's Day. August, not much. Back to school stuff. September, nothing really. Uh, October, you're gearing up for Halloween. November, Thanksgiving, December, Christmas. So I thought, okay, well, they just picked that because there was nothing going on in December and they needed something to kind of fulfill the year. But it goes over in the book why December 25th was picked. Or, you know, why it's in that, that time frame of December. Some people have said that he was born in autumn. And it took a few months or whatever for the Magi to show up. It, anyway, it, it goes over all of that. So if you're wondering why do we do it in December, why was the 25th chosen, when did he actually get born, it goes over that in the book. Somewhere between 2 and 4 B.C., they believe he was born based on Herod's death and uh, Cleopatra. So it goes over that stuff, which is great. Um, but I was just going over um, in the back, the glossary, where it's talking about, because um, technically Christmas isn't over yet. Where am I at? 12 minutes? Christmas isn't over yet. Uh, Christmas tide is the time we're in right now from the 25th until January 6th for Epiphany. Is when, I would say, when we are supposed to celebrate Christmas. You know, we gear up through December. Bang, 25th hits. We all go buck wild. 12 days straight. Beat that Mardi Gras. And then you hit January 6th. And then I got to thinking about, okay, why do we have that 12 Days of Christmas song? I hate that song. That song made no sense to me. Who gives Lords a leaping? That song just didn't make any sense. And who cares about a stupid partridge in a pear tree? What is a partridge in a pear tree? Book explains it. First day of Christmas, partridge in a pear tree. Which you were talking about change in the Friars Forge to the partridge something. And I started thinking about, do we want two peas? Are we trying to do some kind of uh, Friars Forge, Pious Pelican, two P, two Fs kind of a thing? I'm thinking about something. I may have something for you if you don't come up with something first. But uh, the partridge, um, the mother partridge pretends to be injured to decoy predators away from her helpless young, which is a representation of Jesus. And then two turtle doves um, refers to the Old and New Testament. Three French hens are the three virtues found in Corinthians, which is faith, hope, and love. Four calling birds, which is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Five golden rings, which is the first five books of the Old Testament, also called the Pentateuch, uh, or the Torah. Six geese laying, which I want to taste. If you got some, I would like to find some. Six geese laying stood for the six days of creation. Seven swans of swimming is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Eight maids of milking, the Beatitudes. Like, I was, like, <clears throat> the whole time. I'm like, now I love that song. Now that song makes way more sense. But the commercialization and the loss of Christ in the songs and in the season loses the meaning of all this stuff. There is such, there is so much more. There is such a rich depth to the Christmas celebration that people are missing out on by commercializing it. That they're completely buying into this lie and buying into this deceitful, almost anti-Christ nature of Christmas now. Like, we can't say Merry Christmas because it'll offend somebody. The army can't say Christmas. My stupid chocolate holiday house instead of a Christmas house. You know, this stuff is being driven out. We want nothing to do with it, but we still want the celebration. So you completely lose the meaning. It's like when you have rules 
and you have no relationship with the person you're giving the rules to, there will just be rebellion. But if you have a relationship with the person that you're giving the rules to, the rebellion will turn into respect and the person will follow the rules. But anyway, this, I mean, the book, just page for page, and I can't say I couldn't put it down, but I couldn't leave it alone. You know, I had to read a little bit. You know, I'd read a chapter or read a chapter and a half, and then I'd put it down, and I had to really maul on it and just kind of chew it over because I don't want to just read the book just to read the book. I read the book because I wanted to get something out of the book. And, I mean, the glossary is just as good as the stuff, you know, through chapters 1 through 6 or 1 through 7, especially the, the stuff, the, the stories of St. Nicholas. What an amazing man he was. Um, I, I want to stop and say thank you for taking the time and the energy and the money that it took you to put this book out. Without this book, or without this knowledge from this book, um, I would have went on just doing the... I don't want to say the same old garbage, but the same old, same old. I would have been missing. I still would have, I would have missed out on what a rich heritage and a rich history and uh, knowledge that there is in this season that has, has been overlooked, that has been misconstrued, misinterpreted, um, and just played out forgotten from centuries and generations and and, and people just not caring. And you took the time and you cared enough to do this. And I, I really want to say thank you. Uh, that also leads me to the next thing that I'm about to say about the book. So if you have kids, uh, you might want to either stop the video and put them out of the room or put some headphones on. Uh, but the whole Santa Claus thing, as a kid, I thought there was a Santa Claus. And uh, what a ripoff. I mean, the, the, I, I get the point of Santa Claus. I get the point of, hey, if you're not good, kid, Santa Claus isn't going to leave you anything. It's like a bargaining chip for you know, your child to be good. I, I get that. But what a ripoff from the real meaning of Christmas and the real meaning of St. Nicholas or St. Nicholaus. He was such an awesome man. Why would you want to uh, uh, water that down for somebody and make that into to something that he's not? I mean, what a loss. But after this Christmas, um, I've, I've talked with my wife a little bit about it. And I've talked with Chris Stanfield, my brother, Williams Breyer. And Chris and his wife have talked about it. They don't have any kids yet. Um, and I've seen Joffrey the Giant uh, on hit one of his videos. Uh, so hopefully the kids are still out of the room. Um, we're done with the Santa Claus business. Um, we kind of went back and forth with it if we were going to do no Santa Claus or Santa Claus when Roman, my oldest son, who's six, and uh, now we've got three boys, Roman, Levi, and Griffin. Uh, six, four, and two. Yeah, we were busy. Uh, but... There's there's so much more to Christmas without Santa Claus that why would I want to take away all the truth and all the meaning from Christmas and give them some watered-down, sissy version of this weak celebration? I mean, that's, that's just like the dumbest thing in the world. And so next year... Uh, as we're gearing up for Christmas 2014, we are not going to do Santa Claus. We are going to do Advent. We are going to teach 
the history and the reason why there's uh, there's more, there's way much more to celebrate for Christmas and Santa Claus, and there's way more to look forward to than Santa Claus and gifts. So I'm not gonna say we're gonna stop giving gifts, but we're gonna do it right from now on. And the reason why we're gonna do it right is because of the book, the information in the book. Um, it's just uh, it is without sounding corny or cliche. The book touched me. Um, emotionally, spiritually, in a way that I wasn't expecting it. I knew I was going to get something out of it, but I didn't know that it was going to change my view of Christmas that much. Uh, so if you, if you want to have that kind of epiphany, that kind of revelation come to you, for those of you that don't have the book, there is so much information that I, I just can't go over everything. Um, but it, the part in the book where it's talking about the briars and the thistle and how, you know, stuff's going to change. You know, talking about the coming of Christ, just amazing. So the symbolism <clears throat> for the stuff that God laid out for the story of Christ... You could not have had a more perfect, perfectly designed plan and a more perfect manifestation of that plan. Uh, going from the Migdal Eater, the, the watchtower of the flock, where these special sheep are being cared for by shepherds of the temple. And these sheep are specifically for one purpose, for the temple. And that's for sacrifice. And it's pretty easy to go about believing that Mary and Joseph would have went to that place, to the inn there at Migdal Eater, to have Jesus. There would have been no room in the inn, as the story says. But there would have been an area very clean from the way that the Jewish people were with their livestock and the way that they were raised, especially being a temple area, things would have been very sanitary. So for them to be um, in, in the stable would have still been a clean environment for Jewish people, not as a stable or an inn as we think about it in our Western mindset. And this was an area where sheep were being born to be killed <clears throat> for sacrifice for the Jewish people. What a symbolism. Because that's where the lamb who was slain before the foundations of the world, for the world, was going to be born. So, uh, my, my review of the book obviously is a bit long. I could go longer, but my mouth is getting dry. And I think I've I've given a I've given a, a good review of the book. I think I've given my honest opinion of the book. I don't think I could say anything else without being redundant. But it's a fantastic book. Um, I loved it. I'll definitely read it again, uh, probably every year. Just to keep it fresh in my mind, the importance, the significance, and the relevance of why it is more important to include Christ in the Christmas than Santa Claus. Um, now, we're not going to tell everybody that Santa Claus isn't real and they need to worship Christ as the true child and all that stuff. Because, you know, that's where we're going to let the ignorant stay ignorant, you know. But we're definitely going to tell our kids. And, uh... My brother and his wife, they're, when they have kids, they'll tell their kids the same thing, that it's Jesus, and that's the real reason for the season. And I thought that I, when I said that, like, oh, Jesus is the reason for the season, you know. But now I know, I, I really mean that. So, I hope that this review wasn't boring. I hope it was informative. Uh, I know it wasn't very entertaining, but, you know, I wasn't really here to be funny. Uh, or to, you know, song and dance. 
but the book uh, you can get it on I believe Amazon Green Tree Dr. Pete Bartolero uh, you can probably find it online at many places you can get it right from him um, well once they're gone he said they're gone so you guys who love Christmas or who think you are a Christmas person get this book I definitely guarantee that your uh, your view of Christmas will change for the better but that's uh, <coughs> excuse me that's all I've got for tonight uh, so hopefully this this wasn't a waste of your time I know it wasn't a waste of mine I know that somebody will get something out of this if anything pipe pastor pop uh, as I will now call you if you will allow me to call you such a term and it's not out of disrespect by any means uh, that is a, a term that only two people in my life have if you would accept that uh, one is my former youth pastor who was like a father to me loved me uh, helped me very much in life and uh, treated me just like a son disciplined me just like his own son uh, so, chastise me if you will. Uh, I know I need it at, at times, but uh, I hope that you would uh, understand that I don't mean any disrespect by the term pop, as some people use it, but that's a term of endearment and, uh, and respect and love. But alright guys, I have gone on far too long for this evening. I'm just going to probably keep this as one video, but... Uh, Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. Since we're still in Christmas tide, Merry Christmas. Uh, Happy New Year. Love you guys. I'll uh, talk to you later. Next time you see me, we'll probably be on another video with a pipe and a pint. God bless. Merry Christmas. We'll see you later.